Hello designers, so this video is about the tutorial for the tic-tac-toe game uh, where we'll be making use of variables and the advanced prototyping features in Figma to create this game with the complete logic and everything. So last week I put a poll on the community channel asking if you would like to see a tutorial on this and a lot of you guys have voted yes. So in this part one we'll be seeing how we can basically choose the X and O from here so the player can choose X and O and then they will come to the next screen where they can play the X and O game and then we'll see the logic how they can win the game as well. But the things like the draw scenario or having the line shown on this all this would again uh, be a very long tutorial so I thought I'll just keep the main core logics on this part and if you find it interesting you can definitely let me in the comments below based on the request I'll be making a part two as well and also I'll be providing this file as a practice file in the description below you can take this file duplicate it and follow along with me or you can practice later as well so without any further ado let's jump onto my screen and get started so the first thing is to understand the logic for the game on how we can decide if a particular player has won or not so we'll try to understand that and based on that understanding we'll get a bit of an idea on what type of variables we'll be needing for creating this game right so let's jump on to fig jam and i'll try to explain it here uh, what is the logic on this so the first thing is we basically have cells in this game so this is going to be a bit of a programmer approach to this but uh, i'll try to simplify it as much as possible so we basically have cells here so these are divided into nine cells right so the first thing is we want to have an identification for each of these cells here so we're going to call this as C1, C2, C3 and so on. So these are the different cells that we have. So we basically have nine cells and each of this we are calling it by a particular name, right? So when I'm saying we are calling it by a particular name, these are nothing but going to act as our variables, right? So we have nine variables already because we need these variables to store what the player has put into it, right? So it can either be an X or it can be an O and the default state of this is going to be empty, right? So these will basically have three states or three different values and C1, C2 are going to be our variables. So here we have the variables and let's see how a particular game would happen right so the first thing is we'll see that let's say the player starts with x here so the X guy has won it and this is how we won it, right? So this is a very basic scenario just to make you understand how we can uh, find out which player won the game, right? So here we can see that player X has won, but how did he basically win it? Let's see the logic behind it, right? We understood that this person won because here C1, C2 and C3 are equal. But to put this in logical terms, we need to build a logic for this, right? So here the logic is pretty simple. So here we need to check that C1 is equal to C2 and also check if C2 is equal to C3. So if this condition is true, that means that all the cells or the values here are same, right? So when we understand that these values are same, it basically means that this particular player has won the game, right? So the game is over. So this is the logic that we have to check. But the thing is like this logic has to be checked multiple times, right? For different scenarios. So how many scenarios are possible here? So one is this particular line, then we have two, then we have three, that is horizontal. And then we have vertical one, two, three. So totally six. And then there are two more scenarios possible, right? So one is this diagonal scenario and the other one is this diagonal scenario. So here we have totally, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have to check eight conditions here to determine if some player has won the game or not. So this is the very basic understanding or the logic behind this game. We just have to translate this particular logic into Figma's interactions, right? So the condition is going to be like, first thing we have to check if a particular cell is empty or not. So once a user taps on it, only if the particular cell is is empty we need to do the following actions so here we are back on a figma file the first thing we want to do is create the variables that we need for running the logic in this game right so based on my previous explanation we got a little bit of idea on what variables we need right so the first thing we got to know is we need a variable for each of the cells so that is understood so we need c1 c2 c3 up to c9 for storing the value on what is there inside these particular cells and the next thing is we want to know which is the current player that is running so we need a variable for that and then we need one more variable which will basically determine the winner of the game right so let's go ahead and create those variables so here i'm going to create a string and also a short note here if you have the enterprise plan you can basically create these cells as one particular variable and use modes so you can check my previous video on the advanced prototyping on how to use modes and you can add nine modes here but the thing is i'm on the professional plan and i cannot add more than four modes so i'm using this particular logic where i'm using nine different variables for nine different cells so that is another thing to note here so here i'm just going to fast forward this so the first thing Thing we need is a current player so this will store the value on which player is actually playing the game so initially 
we just want to leave this as empty uh, until the user selects which player is going to go first and then we need a string which will store who is the winner for the game so this is going to be winner and again this is going to be empty because we don't have a winner right now and then we need nine different variables for the nine different cells right so i'm just going to fast forward this this is nothing but just a string and also I'm going to give the same value as the cell name or the value as well. The reason for this we'll get to know as we create the game, right? So for now, just create the variable name and the value as the same thing. So this is going to be C1. So there you go. We have all the variables that we need for creating the first part of the game. So now our variables are created. Let's jump back to the screen. So I'll just close this and now let's understand what are the components that we see here, right? So these are nothing but just empty cells that we are going to place it on the screen right here. So as you can see, these are just cells from C1 to C9. And then we have two different states for selecting X and O. So this is going to be placed on each of these cells here. And once the user taps on it, it would either change to X or it would change to O. So that is the reason for having this component set. And there's no interactions in this as of now, right? So first thing, we'll just place this on these different cells. So I'm just going to take an instance of this one and we're going to place it here. I'm just going to duplicate it again, place it on the next cell. And now we have to assign the particular variable using which it can know that this particular is cell one and it has to store the value of that particular cell. For that reason, we are going to select the first cell here and in the right, we have this option, right? Which is to assign a variable for this particular cell. So I'm going to select this one and select C1 here. So what this basically does is whatever value we given C1 will get assigned to this particular frame or the cell here. So we'll just repeat this for all of the cells. I'm going to choose a cell to come here, click on assign variable and choose C2. So there we go. We have basically assigned all these cells to that particular cell variable. If I change the value of C9 to X, you can see that X gets applied here, right? So let me just show you that part here. So if I go to the local variables and instead of C9, if I give the value as X here, you can see that X gets applied. Change this back to C9. So now we have that. We just have to write the logic for finding the winner and applying the value to this. So let's go ahead and start creating the interactions. So we'll select the first particular cell here and go to prototype and add our interaction. So I'll add a new interaction and on click, we want to check for a condition, right? So the condition here is that we want to check if this particular cell is empty or not. And for that reason, if you remember in the local variables that we created, we gave C1 and the value is C1, right? So here we can basically check if C1 is already equal to C1, which means that particular cell is empty. And that is the reason I told you to give the values as the same variable name because we want to use that as a check here. So if you remember this logic as well, first thing is we want to check if it is empty and then the rest of the check has to come in. So I'll go back here and here we'll check for a conditional statement. So I'll give conditional and here we want to check this is C1, right? This is the first cell. So I'll choose C1 and check if this is equal to C1, which is a static text C1. And you have to give it in double quotes because this is a static text we want to compare it with. So this is how I'm going to check it. So double quotes, we are basically checking if the value inside C1 is still C1, which means it is empty. And if it is empty, then we want to change it to X or O based on the current player. So I'm going to add an action to this and set the variable of this particular cell, which is C1. And we want to set this to whichever is the current player. So we'll choose the current player. So once the user selects X or O, that becomes the current player. And that particular value gets set here. That is the logic which is happening here. So I'll just leave it at this and see if this works or not. Right. So I'll click on the first frame shift spacebar. This is our prototype. I'll click on X and we'll choose this one. And as you can see, X came in. Let's check the other way around. If I choose O here and I choose this one, there comes O. So that is a very basic logic on setting X or O on the game. As soon as the player's turn is done, we have to check if that particular player has won or not. So going back to the logic again. So I'm going back here and we'll add the conditional statement to check if this particular player has won or not. And for that, as I explained here, we have to check for one, two, three. So three vertical, three horizontal and two diagonals, right? So we have to check all these scenarios and determine if the player has won or not. So going back here, we'll add our first condition to check if the player has won. So I'm going to choose conditional. So we're going to write the logic for this particular line to check if these three are equal or not. So the first logic is going to be C1. I'm choosing the C1 cell here or the variable checking if it is equal to which is double equal to C2, which is nothing but this particular cell. So we are done with the first part. So if this two are true and 
for and you can basically use double ambassance so you just type double and and that basically is a and operation so this and the other condition also has to be true right so we are checking these two are equal now check if c2 is equal to c3 so c2 equal to c3 so if this particular condition is true this basically means that whichever player is playing right now has won the game right so for that reason we are going to add an action and set the variable of the winner so the winner is going to be who's going to be the winner the current player right so we are going to set it as current player so if this particular condition which is if all these three are equal we are setting the winner to the current player and that basically shows that the game is over right and we have to repeat this multiple times right we have to repeat this for eight times because we have to check all the eight three horizontal three vertical and two diagonal so let's just add keep adding the next condition as well so i'm going to add the next condition here this is going to be the next horizontal one so this is going to be c4 so we are checking c4 equals c5 and c5 equals c6 right c5 equals c6 okay so this is a condition which uh, checks if this particular line is filled with the same type of player so that is done and again the action for this would be the winner we have to set the winner so winner is going to be equal to the current player okay so we are going to repeat this for all the eight number of times i'm just going to fast forward this part you got the basic logic of this one right so i'm going to add a new condition and just checking all these scenarios so as you can see we have added all the conditions here the first one is to add the particular x or o to the cell and all these rest of the eight conditions are to check if the player has won or not right so we are basically checking if the player is won or not and we are setting that to the winner variable right but setting the value to the winner variable is not enough right we also need a state where we show that the player has won or not so for that reason we are going to use another screen here so let me just create a new screen so this will show who won and for that reason this should be equal to the winner right so instead of the current player we have to set this as the winner so here i'm going to unlink this and assign the variable as winner so this will show that x has won or o has won right so that will be the state of this and going back to our interactions here so let me just open up the interactions right here so along with setting the value to the winner variable we also need to navigate them to the new screen right where we show that this particular player has won so along with setting the variable here in this particular condition we are going to add a new action here so i'm going to add a new action which would navigate the user to the next screen so we're going to call this as winner screen okay i'm just going to rename this so that we can select it on the next screen so going back to the condition opening the first variable here and in navigate to we are going to choose winner so we are just going to navigate the user to the next screen where we can show if the player has won or not the logic is basically we are checking if the player has won we are setting the variable to winner and we are navigating them to the next screen so that is the logic and we're going to add this navigate to on all the different cells here so i'll just open up each of these and add a new action which is navigate to the winner screen okay i'm just going to fast forward this part so there we go this is the last one and i've set it to navigate to the next screen so let me just close this and now we can see that the interaction is just for this particular cell right we need to give this interaction to all the other cells as well you can select each cell and keep adding this logic but that's going to take a lot of time so the other alternative is you can just select the interaction here you have a small space here to select an interaction so that gets selected and now you can simply copy this so i'm just going to hit on command c or control c and now choose all the remaining cells that we have right here so i'm going to choose all the other cells and i'm going to hit on control v or paste and that will add the interaction to the rest of the cells as well right so that is a simple way to do it but adding the same interaction to the other cells is not enough because we need to modify some things inside it so let's select the second one here and tell you what is the modification so all this logic of checking who is the winner is common for all the interactions the only thing that we have to change is the first one here so in the first one we basically have to check if c2 is equal to c2 right because this is the c2 cell so and this one and also the setting variable we need to set the current player to the c2 cell because that is the cell we are interacting with so that is the only change we have to do in all the interactions so i'm going to select this one and choose c2 and this one should be equal to c2 okay so that part is done and setting it to the c2 variable so now you can see this is correct right so we are checking if c2 is empty and setting the current player to c2 and the rest of the interactions would remain the same so let me just repeat this for all the cells I'm just going to fast forward this part. So I've changed all the variables according to the cell number. Basically that finishes all the logics that we have to do. Let me just run this prototype and see if the game works or not. 
So we missed the logic there because after a player's turn is done, we have to switch it to the next player, right? So we missed that logic. So let's go ahead and add that logic. We missed a very silly logic here. So we're going to choose each of these cells here. So after checking each of these logics, if the player has one, we have to do the next thing, which is we have to switch the player, right? So for that, I'm going to add a new action here. So this is going to be set variable, but we have to set it based on what is the current player, right? So we need to do a conditional statement here again and check if the current player is equal to x so let's say if the current player is equal to x then we have to change the current player to o so we are using a set variable setting the current player to o okay but if the current player is o we need to change it back to x right so that will be the else statement here so in the else statement i'm going to set a variable and change the current player to x so that finishes the logic so this will basically keep alternating between x and o and that will keep the current player updated so we need to add this interaction to all of these so I missed this one. So make sure you add this before copying and pasting the interaction to the rest of the things. So I'll just speed this part up. Okay, with that, I've added the logic of switching the player between X and O. And now I hope it should actually work. So let's go ahead and play this one once again. So shift spacebar and this time I'm going to choose X. As you can see, this is switching between players and this is going to win X. So as you can see, the third horizontal row was filled and X has won. So let's try it once again, this time with X. So I'm going to choose this one. So I'm just playing random options here. So as you can see, the vertical first row was filled with O and that's how O has won. So that's it, guys. That is the logic on doing it. You just have to keep switching between the players and assign that particular player to the cell. And also along with that, check these eight different logics and see if, if the player has won or not. And based on that, you can switch them to another screen. So the main reason for variables is not actually to create games. This is just a fun experiment. You can use this to create real uh, use case scenarios. You can check the previous video that I made on how you can do a checkout page page using these variables and it really enhances the flow for user testing and things like that. So I hope you got a pretty good idea of this and if you want the part two of this on seeing how we can add that lines and the draw scenario and things like that, definitely uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to create a part two on that based on the number of requests I get. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.